Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Complete Sports Media's podcast. I'm your host, Darren Campbell. Unusual joining me is Jason Cameron. Hey, Jason, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic, actually. It's finally, officially my Christmas hiatus, as it is yours. So I've just been kicking up my feet and not doing anything. It's been yeah. fantastic. <laughs> nice, yeah. I know it's been a really great weekend, and it's nice to be on holidays. It was pretty intense um, working for the last few weeks for me, and uh, I'm sure for you too, trying to finish everything before the break. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Trying to get everything else done and then get some things organized together for the new year, but uh, it's, it's, just, it's just great to be off. Yeah. Be off. Well, it was an amazing, fun weekend in football. Uh, we're on Monday here, so we got the Monday nighter tonight. Uh, the Steelers facing the, the Bengals. Uh, even though the Steelers have lost two in a row and they're reeling, the Bengals have lost five in a row and having another really lousy season there, 2-10-1. And, one. and um, yeah, they lost 36-20 uh, to Pittsburgh earlier in the year. Uh, I expect the Steelers to be able to uh, get the win tonight and get off their losing streak. Uh, even though the running game has been horrible, um, I think they've got a much better team than Cincy does. Yeah, I, I, I believe so, too, as well. And unfortunately, with Cincy not having their number one quarterback and probably not going to be having him back for quite some time because of that injury that he suffered, um, I expect the Steelers to come out with a win tonight. Yeah, they're actually down to their third string QB t tonight. Uh, Ryan Finley's going to take over. Um, the, uh, yeah, they, they had their Brandon Allen went down and was hurt last week, so... Uh, third string QB, uh, definitely uh, a you know really bad, uh, really bad season after Joe Burrow went down um, with that season-ending knee injury on November 22nd. Um, yeah, you know the season was over for them. Uh, Steelers uh, reeling a little bit with their loss to Washington and Buffalo. Um, their their running game, as I mentioned a little earlier, has been terrible. Only 50 yards in two of their last six, seven games. So. No running attack. Uh, James Conner was actually um, said to be out uh, tonight as well. He's got a quad injury that he's dealing with. And, um, yeah, so uh, Ben Roethlisberger is going to have to utilize his weapons and uh, maybe another big game from Chase Claypool. Well, hopefully a, a huge game from Chase Claypool since uh, they're not going to really have much of a running attack. So I think Big Ben's going to be putting it up in the air. Quite a bit tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're, um, I guess we're a little over three hours away from that game. And uh, that will end um, week 15. And uh, it was a, uh, it was a really fun weekend. Lots of great matchups. And it definitely uh, really solidified the playoff pictures. Uh, it's great to see the Seahawks, even though they didn't play really fantastic with their 20 to 15 win over Washington. They moved to 10 and 4, clinched a playoff spot, their eighth playoff spot out of the last nine years, and they moved back into first as the Rams had a shocking loss to the winless Jets. So uh, great to see uh, Seattle back up there, and, and uh, hopefully if they can win their next two games, um, yeah, they'll, they'll have a good opponent in that first playoff matchup. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Um, and it's a shocking way to rise to the top with the Revs losing to the Jets. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. Like, I had to look at the score a number of times to say, oh, did, is that a thing? Is that a real? Is that, that is real. Oh, my goodness. I, I never would have thought that the Rams would have lost their, their number one spot because of the Jets, ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I think it wasn't it last week that you said uh, there was a mandate in the NFL that yeah. said uh, you must – uh, beat the Jets, they must lose every single game. And uh, I guess the Rams didn't get the memo. Uh, I think I just texted you yesterday, hell has frozen over because we did not expect that. They, uh, the whole entire Jets nation was actually mad about that. They, uh, they didn't want to win. They, they wanted to get the first overall draft pick. And now it looks like uh, Jacksonville is going to get it um, in the – the Lawrence uh, sweepstakes, and uh, they, they messed up. They somehow messed up, and uh, all the plans that they had went down the tubes. Uh, they weren't able to go winless. Yeah, it, it's amazing. It's almost like the players said, hey, let's win one for the Gipper. 
let's do this. Let's do this. All right. And then the but management's like, no, don't do that. Don't do that, please. Just lose. <laughs> lose the game. But hey, you know what? Great for the Jets. They they won a game. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how they break that tie they have the tiebreaker if the teams finish at the bottom there, they go on strength of schedule and they, they say Jacksonville had a, a much tougher schedule this year than the Jets had. So uh, if both teams lose out to the rest of the year, it'll go there. Um, Justin Fields looks like to be the, the number two draft pick um, by all consensus picks. And, you know, definitely not, uh, you know, a, a slab of beef. I think he's going to be pretty good in the NFL, but, um, Lawrence has been the guy that everybody's talking about going to be able to come in and possibly resurrect the franchise. I don't know about resurrecting the Jets and the Jags, but, uh, you know, maybe he's got an opportunity to be a good quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, hopefully. And I hope he can walk on water as well, because that's what he's going to need to do to raise those two franchises up into like viable, uh, winning program, uh, like, yeah, teams. Yeah, for sure. exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, we want, I want to talk about a few former Jets today. Uh, first of all, let's talk about Jamal Adams. And uh, did you see the press conference that he had uh, after the win? He couldn't have been happier finally going to the playoffs. Uh, he was just ecstatic. He said, usually this time of year, I'm shipping my cars back home. I'm getting plans to get ready to see my family and people I haven't seen in a long time. And uh, you guys are used to it here in Seattle. But, man, this is new to me, and I am pumped. <laughs> he got out of purgatory. Of course he's pumped, man, because, you know, like it would be something else for you to be a player of his caliber and never even sniff the playoffs. Yeah. That would suck. That would suck to a great extent. So now that he's part of the Seahawks and part of this winning organization, he's just like, oh, oh I can get used to this. I don't think I want to go anywhere right now. So I, it's good to see that the man is happy and he's content and he's he's found a home in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm super thrilled for him, uh, man. That was a yeah. I, I try to find that clip. Uh, it's pretty awesome how excited he was and really great. Um, yeah, nice to see the Seahawks uh, continue their winning ways. Uh, they didn't play that great against Washington. Washington has had a a good defense this year, but. Uh, yeah, they had a very, very quiet day. Uh, Russell Wilson only threw for 121 yards and a touchdown. Um, they had a good uh, touchdown run from Carlos Hyde, a 50-yard run. Jacob Hollister got a, a touchdown, but Carson was held only 63 yards. Lockett was only held to 34 yards and four carries or four catches, and DK was only five for 43. Uh, nail blader there for sure, um, but uh, Seattle pulled it out. Yep, Seattle pulled out the win, and Washington's defense actually has steadily been getting better from week to week. So uh, this defense for Washington stepped up, but they just couldn't put enough points on the board to get the win. Yeah. Uh, Washington is still in the driver's seat in that uh, uh, NFC East, um, but they ensured with that loss that the no team will finish above 500 this year. Uh, the last team to make the playoffs – with uh, an 8-8 eight eight record with the 2013 Packers, and they lost immediately in the wild card round. So uh, uh, everybody's, I'm sure, hoping to face the, you know, the winner out of that division. Uh, I can't believe that they, they can still show teams that are you know, only four wins still have a shot at the playoffs. It's uh, insane that you, know, you, could probably, you could possibly win six games out of 16 and make the playoffs this year. Yeah. It is it's extremely ridiculous because those teams are garbage. They're yeah. really, really bad. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing what happens in the wild card game when these, uh, when the, whoever wins that division plays and just like how bad they're going to get beaten. Like, like how bad is that going to be? Or they could win. No, nah, no, nah, that would be crazy. I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just look ahead. Uh, the Giants play the Ravens uh, next mm -hmm. Sunday. Washington plays the Panthers, and then we've got the Cowboys and the Eagles facing each other. And I think all teams are still alive. Um, yeah, crazy enough. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that shakes out. Um, well, why don't we? Uh, yeah, why don't we talk about that Jets win? Uh, how the heck did that happen? How did the Rams uh, let the the sad sack Jets uh, 
pulled that win. Um, you know, did you see anything that made you see, oh, okay, that's exactly why? Uh, no, <laughs> and, but I, this is what I did see. I, I saw that the Jets players were definitely up for this game for whatever reason. They, they, they seemed to me that they had more of a fire in their bellies for this game than any other game throughout the entirety of the season. And so like, it's like they wanted it. They wanted to be to play upset to the Rams, or maybe they just got some friends on the Seahawks and they're just like, no, we're going to do this for them. Let's go get them. Go get them, right? So, but they, they hey, much credit to the Jets. They managed to pull off the win, an incredible win at that. And uh, the Rams, that's a game that they should not have lost. And they lost it, so. Um, I guess with uh, with the quarterback there, Sam Darnold, um, if he doesn't win, uh, you know, good chance that Lawrence is coming in, uh, he's going to be out the door. So, you know, you'd think that that would be a, a big motivating factor for him, and uh, he would try to rally the troops around to, you know, try to get this victory because, uh, yeah, good chance if they, you know, finish winless, they're not going to bring that quarterback back. They're going to try to – cut their losses and get off of him and so um you know yeah that's a good you know to me that would probably be one of the main reasons why they were able to pull off this win yeah yeah no that that's definitely a reason right there for sure um and also too i guess if he's i i, I would assume that he's liked in the locker room so maybe the guys did pull for him so that they could get this win for sam darnold but either way it's still not a good look you know no. what I mean? It's still, it's still no good. It's not good. So, like, depending upon where they land for the draft, I don't think the Jets are just going to pass on Lawrence. If they get a chance to get him, they take him. Yeah. Uh, the Jets had their eighth straight game scoring on their opening drive, which was pretty miraculous to me. That uh, was quite a shocking stat. And uh, we talked about Frank Gore last week, and you said, oh, I couldn't even believe Frank Gore was still in the league anymore. <laughs> He made NFL history yesterday, He's played in his 240th career game. That's the most ever for a running back in the NFL, passing Lorenzo Neal. And he scored a touchdown in the third quarter to kind of accentuate that, yeah, hey, I'm still legit. I'm pretty good, uh, you know, and, and he's got that record for the longest longevity as a running back ever. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. It's amazing. It, it's almost kind of impossible that he actually has done this throughout his career but hey that's frank gore he's mr durable for yeah. sure and the guy just keeps going and going i love it yeah great to see great to see him do keep doing it um yeah i hope he sticks around for a while and pushes that record uh, out of reach for uh, any running back for the future um you know running back's career is last you know next to nothing now and uh you know he, he might be able to have an unbreakable record if he plays another year or two that might never be able to ever touch that so it's kind of cool yeah nice nice to see and uh, good chance that uh, you know records like that to ensure a hall of fame induction uh, even though he wasn't you know one of the best of his generation um, you know longevity is a really important thing and it can you know push your records and push your things into you know the territory that you, you should be in the hall of fame oh yeah for sure like his longevity his longevity is no joke for sure like, yeah, yeah it, there's no way, conceivable way, that you look at him as a running back and be like, oh, yeah, that guy's going to have, like, a 20-year career. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a thing. That shouldn't actually happen, yeah. ever. But yeah. it has to happen. Super impressive, yeah. Really cool to see. I think the biggest game yesterday, according to most people, was the uh, battle between the Chiefs and the Saints, um, of the late game in the afternoon yesterday. Um, Drew Brees coming back from 11 broken ribs and a, a punctured lung. I didn't expect uh, very much from him because, you know, coming back from that much of an injury, uh, you know, being out for weeks and weeks and not probably being able to train that hard with those types of injuries. Uh, but uh, it was a tight game, pretty pretty great uh, showing and a nice 32-29 victory for the Chiefs. Uh, they moved to 13-1 and one and uh, they're still rolling. Uh, yeah, maybe not as good of a performance as I've seen them have, but uh, they still got the one. Yeah, and Mahomes is freaking incredible. That's all I got to say. That guy is – there's there's certain plays that he did where you're just like, <laughs> what did he just do right there? That Wow, man. Like, 
uh, I wanted to point out that third touchdown that they, they scored, the Chiefs, yeah. he placed the ball in a place that it was perfect. Right. Nobody else could get it except for his receiver. And then the commentators didn't even think it was a touchdown. Yeah. Not, he caught it out of bounds, but it was a perfect catch, and the guy dragged his toes too. Oh, man. And I'm just like, wow. Like I, it's just wow. And he did that on the run, throwing it just to a space. Yeah. Knowing that hopefully his receiver will catch. That was uh, that was super impressive because there was at least half a dozen guys in, in front of him, and they're all running towards the corner as he's trying to run out of bounds, and he slings it right into the very perfect spot. And like you say, yeah, the commentators didn't even know. There was no reaction. They're like, oh, well, that was a throwaway. And then they go, did he actually catch that? Is that, <laughs> that a touchdown? And then I think all the referees were looking at each other like nobody was like, Except the guy that caught the ball thought he oh. actually got it. And then they're like, oh, yeah, that was a touchdown. They looked at replay, and there it is, right in the perfect, very perfect corner of the end zone. Yeah, it was perfect. It, like, it was a perfect pass that he did on the run. And then he did that a number of times in the game. There's a reason why this guy's like the best quarterback in the league. Yeah, yeah. You, you saw it in this game, man, numerous times. The Chiefs were um, dealt a big blow, though. Um, their running back, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, uh, left the game with a, a high ankle sprain and, an, a, and another injury. Um, what else did he injure? His ankle and uh, his hip. Oh, yeah, his hip had an injury, too. Uh, he'll be out for the last two games of the regular season, and uh, they're going to evaluate him then to see if he's ready for the playoffs. Um, that elevated Le'Veon Bell into that spot. Um, we've already mentioned Jamal Adams and Frank Gore, two former Jets. This is another former Jet that goes from the outhouse to the penthouse. And uh, he got a big touchdown yesterday. Uh, do you think Bell's going to be able to fill in pretty pretty well for um, Edward Siller? I, I think so. And also, too, that's not a bad guy to go to since your number one went down. Not bad at all. So I, I think, I think uh, the Chiefs are still in good hands there. And I think uh, Le'Veon Bell, he's fresh, right? He really hasn't been used all that much. So it, this is uh, uh, an abundance of wealth for the Chiefs, knowing that they have this guy in their back pocket. Yeah. Uh, the Saints would have won that game if they would have recovered that fumble in the end zone. Uh, that was pretty tough. They uh, punched the ball loose on a kick return, and it went in the end zone and looked like uh, the guy had it, and it just slipped through his grasp. and. The whole entire Saints team was, yes, no, just de 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 dejected uh, the second they realized that he didn't recover it. Uh, they would have won that game. But, um, yeah, did you, did you see that play? Holy cow. Yeah, I did. And I, and I felt real bad for that player because he's probably not going to be with the team next week. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy, you're gone. You're out of here, man. We don't want you anymore. Yeah, that's hilarious. Uh, Breeze, uh, Breeze looked pretty good. He was um, uh, he was 15 for 34, 234 yards, three touchdowns. He threw a pick, and he was 0 for 6 for the first time in his 20-year career. He was 0 for 6 to start the game. So um, he had a little bit of trouble starting, but uh, had a pretty decent game for a guy coming back from the injury that he had. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it, Drew Breeze is still Drew Breeze. He's still really, really, really good. It just took him a while. To start getting going but once he did wow man he made it a heck of a game for the chiefs he did not make that easy for the chiefs to win that game at yeah. all um kelsey uh travis kelsey had another eight catches uh he has a chance to be the first tight end ever to lead the league with the most receptions uh he got another touchdown tyree kill had a touchdown uh Nicole hardman as we mentioned Le'Veon bell um, Taysom Hill got a touchdown for the Saints, and uh, he's still a great weapon they have. Um, that was Mahomes' 21st game with three touchdown passes, throwing, and one running, at least one running. Uh, he, he holds the record with Dan Marino and Kurt Warner uh, for, the first, for the quickest to do it in 50 games. Um, pretty good, great company to have Dan Marino and Kurt Warner as two guys that uh, you're setting another record. Mahomes just sets records, seems like, every week. Yeah, yeah, because he's, you know, he's, he's really good. He's really good. 
And yeah, he just has that, he has that ability within him to continue to keep the, putting up numbers, crazy numbers, all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Chiefs are 13-1 uh, and one on top of the AFC. Uh, Pittsburgh is 11-2, and two, probably tonight going to 12-2, and two, so they're uh, second seed. Then we've got Buffalo at 11-3. and three. And then in the AFC South, we've got Tennessee and Indy battling it out. Right now, they've got Tennessee on top uh, because of divisional matchups against each other. And then the other two wildcard teams right now are Cleveland, who are 10-4, and four, and Miami, who's just a notch above uh, Baltimore, who's 9-5. and five. A lot of pundits say that um, Baltimore's got a bit of an easier schedule than Miami, and they kind of expect um, Baltimore to be that team that jumps in. But, um, yeah, Buffalo played really great on Saturday. Tennessee's rolling, 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 obviously, with their weapons. Uh, Cleveland um, shocking everybody and, uh, you know, getting up to 10-4, and four, setting a lot of franchise records for them. Uh, haven't been in the playoffs for 12 years, haven't done anything for 15, haven't done anything really since they've been back in Cleveland. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, that AFC picture is um, really starting to take shape. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, it's really starting to take shape. And with the Browns, like, uh, having the chance finally to go to the playoff, Browns fans have got to be ecstatic over that. Because I think the last time they could really cheer for the team, wasn't Jim Brown playing? Like, like <laughs> that far? That yeah. far? <laughs> Not long yeah. ago? So, oh, you know what I mean? So. Baker Mayfield, hey, I guess he's the truth. Got him to the promised land. So great, uh, great job by the Browns to get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good to see for those uh, long-suffering Cleveland fans. And and mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, they only three years ago they were winless. They were in the same uh, boat that the Jets and the Jags are in, uh, and they were able to get Baker Mayfield because of that. And he's somehow been able to turn it around. Um, I think there's been a lot of question marks with him if he has the ability and skill to uh, be able to do it. But this year, he's been fantastic. Um, he's only thrown one pick in the last seven games. Uh, so he's really keeping control of the ball. He's throwing it away if he needs to. Uh, their running game is fantastic. And, um, yeah, they're, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That, well, you could say that their backfield might be the best backfield in football with Nick Chubb. And Kareem Hunt, like that, that is that is as dangerous a backfield as it gets in the NFL. And then also too, like you just said, he's only thrown one pick in seven games. That's freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Like that, that's that's just showing the maturity that he's now developed over the many years that he's been in the league. That he knows when to throw away the ball and when to make that pass. Yeah, yeah, really great. I'm I'm super impressed. And uh, yeah, I had my doubts. That he was going to be the man, but uh, he's yeah he's proven me wrong and, and proven a lot of uh, doubters wrong and um, yeah it's it's as I said it's good to see uh, that Bucks um, Falcons game was pretty crazy uh, seventeen nothing at the half for the Falcons um, I think uh, Howard Blank and many of the Falcon staff went uh oh uh, wasn't this wasn't this the kind of shape we had. Tom Brady in in Super Bowl 51, and uh, he, he came back on us, and, and Brady broke their hearts again. Uh, Brady's never lost to the Falcons. Uh, Matt Ryan has never won against Tom Brady, never won against the Bucs, and uh, they came back. Uh, it was a, a crazy comeback in the second half, and, and uh, they're 9-5, and five and they're, uh, they're looking strong with a lot of weapons. Thank you for reminding me about that. Thank you for doing that again. I much appreciate it. Much appreciate it. Um, yeah, it seems that the Falcons can't beat that guy. And when they think they have him, they do not. They, they do not. They do not have it within them. It, I, I was watching the game, and I thought to myself, no, oh, man, they're probably going to lose. They're going to lose somehow. I don't even know how they're going to do it, but they're going to lose somehow, and then they did. Brady was miraculous again. Like, that's his second half was – ridiculous found all his weapons pretty much all at once and just came storming back to win that game so. yeah well uh yeah it just it was crazy and i'm sorry to remind you of that i'm probably gonna remind you of the super bowl for the rest of our lives because you know that was one of the most craziest turnarounds and comebacks in history and 
as long as Brady's around, uh, you know, we're going to have to remember, you know, him pulling out miraculous games like this. He, he, uh, he ended up throwing for 390 yards, a couple touchdowns. But look at, the, look at the weapons that he had. Finally, Antonio Brown got his first touchdown as a buck, which was super cool. And uh, even though, you know, he's been a complete idiot for the last few years, um, you know, good to see that weapon finally working for them. Uh, you know, he's got Brown, he's got Evans, he's got Godwin, he's got Brait and Fournette scored a couple touchdowns. He's got Gronk. Uh, how could you, you know, how could you not be 9-5 and five with the weapons that they have on offense? Well, yeah, or you could even argue that maybe their record should be even better than what it is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, since it's Brady's first year in this new offensive scheme, that's where they're at, and they're in a good position right now. They're in a very, very good position. with them only looking up and getting better as Brady begins to really get a hold of the offense in his mind. Um, that was Brady's seventh comeback from 17 plus points down, tying Peyton Manning and Philip Rivers for the most all time victories in uh, that department. And um, yeah, Brady's got, you know, uh, records after records after records and there'll be more, I'm sure as long as he can, yeah, keep, keep a bit healthy and, and uh, keep with these weapons. Um, on the other side, uh, the Patriots are missing the playoffs for the first time in 12 years. Um, I guess it was probably a good time for Brady to jump ship there and, uh, you know, get with the weapons that they have. Uh, you know, a lot of people are blaming this on Cam Newton, but, uh, you know, what does he have in that offense? Really, they haven't addressed their needs very well at all. And, um, yeah, they, they fall out of favor and uh, fall out of the playoff stretch. It's good to see. Uh, nice to see Buffalo for the first time in 25 years get that crown of that division. And yeah. the Patriots are, are no longer. We don't have to see them. We don't have to see Belichick. We don't have, they have you know, his press conferences where he doesn't say nothing. Uh, finally, they're, they're done. Uh, I hope they're done for a while now. Well, you know what? The te- like Cam Newton was never going to be enough to elevate that team because the team was not very good to begin with, right? Like they just don't have the pieces. And yes, I'm ecstatic like you are. Sweet. I don't, you don't have to deal with you guys anymore. All right, man. You guys stay over there, stay in the background for a while. Take it easy. Go golfing. Golfing <laughs> is fun. I know you guys like to do that. Go do that, man. Yeah. And then, yes, um, you know, like you can't. They've had years of excellence for a long, long time. And now finally, it's happened like this. It was eventually going to happen anyways. So you know what? They'll be tool and they'll be better, hopefully, down the line in a couple of years, maybe four or five. Do you see Cam Newton staying there? <sighs> if Cam Newton will probably stay if they actually address the offensive needs. need weapons man they need people to um that he can put, t- toss the ball to that he can hand it off to they just they need more than what he has right now yeah um i thought miami was going to be in trouble with this game because they had uh, two of their top wideouts hurt their top tight end hurt mike gasecki Devonte parker and jakeem brown were both out um tua has had um you know so a little bit of inconsistency but uh, yeah, they were able to pull it together and, and get the big win. Um, Cam Newton had his 17th straight game with only one uh, passing touchdown or less, and that's the longest ever streak for an MVP quarterback like him. So, uh, yeah, maybe he's not the guy. I, I, You know, it's hard to enter a new system like that, and, you know, you don't have the weapons that you need. Um, we'll see what shakes down the offseason, but – uh, I, I'll be happy not to see Belichick roaming the sidelines in the playoffs this year. And, uh, that that hook and ladder play that what Miami had was super beautiful. Uh, one of the coolest uh, touchdowns of the season. Um, how'd you like that one? Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Like you just said, it was a thing of beauty. It was, it was, a, it was a, just a beautiful scheme that they developed to put for to put that play into uh, the game. And it was it was nice, man. It was real nice, real yeah. nice. Um, this game between the Cardinals and the Eagles was a, a real blast. Uh, two former Oklahoma QBs facing off each other, Kyler Murray and Jalen Hurts. 
Uh, Murray had career high, 406 yards passing, uh, three touchdowns through the air, and he had another touchdown on the ground. Um, he is just an absolute phenomenal weapon, talking about weapons. Uh, but Jalen Hurts, man, second game, he uh, you know went toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best in the league, 328 yards through the air, uh, three touchdowns. He had 11 carries for 63 yards and, a, and another touchdown on the ground. Um, yeah, I think uh, the Eagles have found their, their next guy. I think uh, they're going to have to try to get away from Wentz. And uh, what a game that was, though. That was a, a blast to see those two guys battle it all. Oh, yeah. And they battled, did they ever. And for me, I'm looking at it going, who's this guy? Oh, okay, that's cool. This guy kind of came out of nowhere, started playing real well. I, I think they, they ride this guy for the rest of the season, clearly. He, yeah. he was freaking amazing in that game. And then yeah. also, too, I want to point out, obviously, Kyler Murray, freaking awesome. But the venerable Larry Fitzgerald. Yes. Still getting it done yes. with that crazy catch that he had in the corner of the end zone. Oh, man. I, it was just really cool to see uh, old man Larry get it done once again and get that touchdown. Yeah, he's, just, he's just the epitome of excellence. That's what oh, that man. guy I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, Larry Legend, uh, you know, to me is just one of the greatest ambassadors for the sport. Such an amazing guy. What an incredibly long and prolific career. And, um, yeah, what a fantastic catch, and and nice to see him get a touchdown this year. And I, I hope it's not his last year; it probably is. But um, yeah, that was fantastic. And his running mate DeAndre Hopkins with another absolute phenomenal grab for his touchdown. Uh, yeah, you know he's he is just lighting it up week after week after week. And 169 yards, another touchdown. Um, yeah, you know Cardinals are only eight and six. Uh, I think this won't be their year, but um, going forward with Kyler, with DeAndre, uh, yeah, look out. Um, the uh, the teams in the, the league are going to be in, in trouble with those two guys. Oh, yeah, man. And also, too, like, cards management is probably just always going to be sending Christmas presents to Bill O'Brien every year. Just every year to say, oh, Bill, what you did for us, fantastic. Thanks for taking just Larry Johnson. Thanks for that. <laughs> and then, oh, you know what? Just to make it up to you, here's like another bottle of great scotch for you for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see you just uh, a flood of cards and, and well wishes. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, heading his way because, yeah, man, did he ever blow that big time. Uh, David Johnson, you said Larry Johnson, but no, David sorry, Johnson's sorry. the guy. Yeah, yeah, but uh, man, that was the lop most lopsided trade probably in NFL history. And, you know, it only happened this, this last offseason. We're going to be talking about it for many, many more years to come, that's for sure. This, yeah. was only yeah. the, this was only the third game in NFL history where both QBs had three passing touchdowns and one rushing touchdown each. Um, so, yeah, it was an incredible matchup. I loved watching it. Couldn't get enough of it. I'm actually going to try to watch it again today uh, because, uh, man, I, I was just so, so much fun watching these two you know offensive dynamos at the quarterback um just yeah just run around the field and have a lot of fun and uh, uh the game was super tight and great oh yeah man they, it was a slug fest and my, uh, kyler eventually won it but hertz gave a good showing a good showing for his team and for the future for the eagles yeah carson Winston says he wants out of there he doesn't want any backup role um i i don't know how it's going to work. I don't know that he's got kind of a guaranteed contract, uh, a lot of money still owed to him, no matter what uh, they can't just outright wave him, cut him. Um, they, they have not that ability. I don't see uh, other teams jumping on his bandwagon because he's had such a horrible year and it seems like his confidence is shot. So uh, we're going to see what happens in Philly, but it would be ridiculous for them to go back to him with the way Hertz has played this last couple of weeks. Uh, I guess we'll have to see. It's only a short two game stretch, but um, the way Hertz is playing so far, holy cow. Um, I think uh, it would be just crazy for them to get off of him. Oh yeah, man. They're, they're definitely not getting off of him. Like he's their starter now and they'll just have to figure out that when situation uh, to maybe through a trade or somebody trying to pick him up or something, or they, they just buy him out. They just pay mm -hmm. him out and just be done with him. 
So, but that will be resolved in due time. But Hertz is their guy going forward, for sure, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. Um, okay, let's let's look a little bit at the NFC playoff picture before we go into any more games. Um, we've got Green Bay on top, uh, eleven and three. Then New Orleans, uh, ten and four. Seattle leading their division, ten and four. They're the third seed right now. Uh, Washington as the four seed leading the the East. Uh, the Rams one game back. Uh, Seattle, they're in the wild card position. Then we've got Tampa Bay and Arizona both in wild card spots. So um, yeah, it's kind of a kind of an interesting playoff picture. What do you see shaking out of it um, as we go forward? Uh, I well, I see that. Uh, I think Green Bay would probably be like uh, obviously the 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 head favorite to get to uh, the to get to the to the final game there for the um, in the NFL. So and uh, for the Super Bowl, Super Bowl. thank you. Um, so. It, it, it's going to be tough, though, man, because all of those teams in the NFC are – they're pretty close in talent level. They're, they're all pretty close. So I don't know if there's going to be, like, one of the teams that can be able to sneak by Green Bay because even though Green Bay is very good, they still have uh, their deficiencies in defense or in offense. So – it's it's going to be a tough one. It's it's going to be a tough ride for anybody to get to the Super Bowl, uh, going through the NFC. Yeah, yeah, it's tr- yeah, true. Very a lot of really tough teams. Um, you know, as it stands right now, three teams are coming out of the West: the Arizona Arizona Cardinals, uh, the LA Rams, and Seattle Seahawks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's tight. Uh, obviously, um, that um, East Divi- East Division team, you know, it's not going to be strong, but uh, the rest of the teams in there are, are strong, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. I think the Seahawks have a real shot, um, but Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers, um, who's leading the league in in touchdown passes, uh, yeah, the front runners there so far, and we'll see if Bree- Breeze can come back fully, uh, be a hundred percent in the coming weeks. Um, that, you know, that's super crucial for them, uh, even though you know Taysom Hill did quite a good job. Uh, in his absence um yeah why don't we just talk about the last few games in the schedule um the Colts had a a win against the Texans uh in in three weeks they had two wins where they beat the Texans on a last minute field uh last minute fumble in the red zone uh another heartbreaker for the Texans who finished four and ten Colts went to ten and four with a 27 20 win and um yeah just Tough, heartbreaking loss for the Texans there. Yeah, yeah. Again, the shadow of Bill O'Brien is uh, is, is very much in in the background. But um, for the Colts, though, Pascal had a big game, two touchdowns, two big touchdowns for them to get the win, solidified for the Colts. And uh, ah, well, I'm I'm still surprised. I'm still impressed with the Colts. Way better than what I thought they would be at the beginning of this season, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Taylor had another touchdown, 83 yards rushing. Rivers had a decent game, a couple touchdown passes. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, uh, four for 71. And um, but yeah, they're looking they're looking strong. I um, I, I can see the Colts going far. Uh, they've got a good defense, and and uh, yeah, their offense has been clicking. Um, the Bears uh, are still alive, actually. They they do have a shot at the playoffs. They're uh, seven and seven. They got a 33-27 win over the Vikings. Uh, David Montgomery has been just playing phenomenal the last little while. They actually handed them the ball 32 times, uh, which is uh, a lot for a running back. Uh, 32 for 146 with a couple touchdowns uh, for him. Uh, he's he's the guy that they're rolling with right now. And uh, the Bears are looking pretty good. Don't know if they're going to make it at 7-7, seven and seven, but um, Trubisky's doing all right and uh, yeah, another big win for them yeah well they have an outside shot or they they're giving themselves an outside shot but it, it's 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 still it's still pretty long in the tooth you know what i mean like it i, I don't know if they'll be, be able to make it but montgomery has been playing fantastic football fantastic football yeah uh justin jefferson set a vikings record for most catches as a rookie passing randy moss um, you know, we, we've been talking about him having a fantastic rookie year, and obviously 
passing the likes of Randy Moss with a record is pretty phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, man. If you're mentioning Randy Moss and this guy in the same in the same breath, then you've done well. You've done really well. So he has had a fantastic rookie season for himself. Yeah, Great work. Vikings are six and eight. Uh, they still call themselves in the hunt, but um, yeah, realistically, they're done. Uh, the Titans had a huge, huge win against the Lions, uh, rolling. I think that's their four straight game with more than 35 points. They beat the Lions 46-25, 10-4 record. Tannehill had five touchdowns, three through the air, two on the ground himself. Uh, Derek Henry, another uh, unbelievable stiff arm. Like I think DBs are just going to give up trying to tackle him high and have to try to get him low because he's just making them look silly, just throwing them away They're like they're little kids. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you make him look like a little child, like you know, like that's a grown man. And you just you slam him down like he was nothing. <laughs> and like, like I think that guy, he couldn't like get out of the TV, like out of the camera quick enough because it's like, well, that was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> he had just been elevated from the practice roster. I didn't notice today if it was his first game, but it was his first game in a while. Uh, yeah, the, you know, he did that too somebody that had been around a lot of years and everybody was like, wow, but uh, you know, yeah, this guy just see you later, get the heck out of my way. And boom, uh, another monster performance from him, 147 yards and a touchdown. And AJ Brown had another touchdown. Uh, Corey Davis had a fantastic game with four catches, 110 yards and a touchdown himself. And um, yeah, you know, week after week after week, we're talking about AJ Brown, Derek Henry, these two monster guys that are, just playing so well. Tannehill's, um, you know, had a massive resurgence there. And, and uh, yeah, I, I would feel a little scared to be playing the Titans these days. The Titans are a dark horse team for sure, man. They, they're, they, they got, they're, they're clicking and they're scary. And then they got this monster in the backfield that will just pancake you if you get in this way. <laughs> Literally, will pancake you. No. So I, I, I'm going to be keeping my eye on the Titans for this playoff run for sure. They're looking nice. They're looking real good. Um, Detroit just announced this afternoon that they fired their special teams coach, Braden Coombs, after um, he had a very weird uh, fake punt. Um, they didn't uh, – they said it was um, unprecedented that he made that call. Nobody else uh, was aware of them making the call. Uh, they just said, uh, you can't do that. Uh, see you later. Boom. They, they canned him today. So – that, I haven't uh, got the full story, but uh, just came down this afternoon. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, Detroit doesn't mess around if you make this kind of call and uh, you screw up. Goodbye. Well, well yeah, because cutting him is going to make the team so much better, right? <laughs> like that, that's what's going to do it. Ah, now we've gotten over the hump. We got rid of that guy. <laughs> yeah. I think they got a little bit more problems just like uh, their special team coach. Good that's call. Good call. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, the Cowboys uh, had another big win over the Niners. Still alive. Five and nine. Um, Pollard uh, replaced Ezekiel Elliott, who got hurt. Uh, Andy Dalton played pretty well. He's, um, he's doing all right. Uh, was able to throw a couple touchdown passes, one to Gallup, one to Dalton Schultz. Um, yeah. I mean, who knows really what's going to happen in that NFC East? I don't know. Uh, do you think the Cowboys, uh, you know, can pull this off and uh, win this division? Sure. <laughs> you know, because it's the NFC East. It's like literally anything can happen in this particular division. I, you know, like if, if the Cowboys keep winning and Dalton keeps looking pretty good, and now that Pollard, Pollard had a really nice game. He looked really good in replacement of Ezekiel Elliott. So I, it's possible. They can put points on the board, clearly. But, I, you know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. But they're probably just out of there immediately once they make the playoffs. Yeah, probably not going to happen much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the Ravens um, had a huge win over the Jags, which is, uh, you know, not, a, uh, not too tough of a, a challenge. Lamar Jackson set a record, 800-plus um, yards rushing. Uh, only quarterback to ever have that back-to-back uh, -back years. Um, yeah, they have that – that really legitimate shot to knock Miami out and, and be that last wild card 
team. Uh, looks like at this point they would face the, the Steelers. Um, yeah, with Lamar Jackson, uh, MVP last year, you can't count uh, Baltimore out of this mix. No, no, you definitely can't count Baltimore out of this mix. And now that I think they've gotten through their whole COVID thing and their team is literally back together again now, um, they're, they're going to be a problem for anybody that they play in the playoffs. Because like you said, Lamar Jackson, he's former MVP of the league. He's really good. So you have to contend with that. You got to contend with him getting out of the pocket in space and then running for 40, 50 yards at a time. So they're going to be a tough out for sure. Yeah. yeah he had another really great touchdown on the ground. Another one through the air. Uh, JK Dobbins had another touchdown. Um, yeah. They, they've got a really good ground game and a lot of good receivers. Uh, speaking of receivers, Des Bryant getting his first touchdown in three years. A little over three years ago, 1,106 days between touchdowns. Uh, pretty cool to see when a guy can make a comeback like this. Yes, yes, it was very cool to see that, that he, you know, finally got a touchdown in three years. Yeah, this is a long time, man, because he was Mr. Prolific when it came to touchdowns. And now that he's finally gotten one, maybe he's going to get a couple more. Yeah. Uh, we had a couple games on Saturday. Uh, loved it. Uh, enjoyed it a lot. Um, the Buffalo game was a huge blowout, though. 48-19. Uh, to 19, uh, They got their 10th uh, win. As I mentioned, it's their first AFC title in 25 years. Um, man, uh, Josh Allen has come in there and definitely uh, changed the, the fortunes of that organization. And, uh, yeah, looking great as, as usual. On Saturday, um, they had another big, big win. Yeah, he looks fantastic. He's got his favorite receiver, Stephon Diggs. was incredible. Like, actually, the whole team just played incredible. Defense was on point, and they just stomped, stomped the Broncos into the mud <laughs> and then stomped them a little bit more just to make sure. Yeah. yeah, man, it was a great win by the Bills. Yeah, they got two touchdowns in 17 seconds. Uh, Diggs is one of the best uh, receivers. Um, I don't know why uh, Minnesota let him go, even though they got Thielen and Jefferson. I'm amazed that uh, they, they got away from Diggs because he's just a huge, huge, huge receiver and uh, one of the best receivers this year. Even though he's you know in Buffalo and he doesn't get a lot of press, um, he's been having an amazing year. The other game uh, on Saturday was Green Bay, Carolina. Green Bay went to 11 and three with the 24-16 win. Um, uh, Carolina ended up firing their GM uh, today um, about it, um, Marty Herlin. Um, Green Bay, um, yeah, they, they didn't look fantastic that game, but they're still rolling. Aaron Rodgers wasn't uh, super happy with the offensive performance, but, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm amazed to see them on, on, on top of the whole conference. They're, they're doing well. Yeah, yeah, they are doing well. And like you said, the, the offense wasn't as crisp as it has been in previous weeks, but a win's still a win, you know? So, and then they are at the top, they're at the cream of the crop, you know? I wouldn't have expected Green Bay to be where they are at the end of this uh, particular NFL season, but there they are again. And that's because of Aaron Rodgers and Vontae Adams. That pairing has been just absolutely on fire, along yeah. with the third weapon they're running back to as well. Yeah, definitely. They got, uh, they got some great weapons. Um, Aaron Rodgers threw his 40th TD pass leading the league. That was his third season uh, getting more than 40. And uh, that's set an NFL record for the most all time. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's been incredible, incredible for them. And, um, yeah, they're, they're rolling. Uh, they, they probably the team to beat in the NFC. Uh, it, this has been a really fantastic week for um, – for football on Monday, that Ravens-Browns game is one of the best Monday night football games ever. Back and forth, back and forth, and a huge, incredible win by the Ravens. Then the, on Thursday, the Chargers beat the Raiders 30-27 to in overtime. And then we get Saturday games, and we get Sunday games, and then we get a Monday nighter. Uh, yeah, football is alive and well, and I'm loving it. Uh, week 16 starts actually Friday, so we've got a Christmas Day game. That's got the Vikings against the Saints. And, um, yeah, it's going to be fun to see. Uh, those two teams always have really incredibly great battles. And we remember the Stefan Diggs 
uh, miraculous uh, miracle in Minneapolis game where he he beat the Saints and knocked them out of the playoffs with uh, with that uh, win there. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun to have a Christmas Day game. I'm going to be watching tons of basketball, and I'll have to have it on a secondary screen, I guess. But um, yeah, it's going to be fun to have have that game on Friday. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great to watch that game for sure because I'm hoping that the Saints and Vikings give us another glorious game like they did for that playoff um, a couple years back. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm also looking forward to all the basketball that's going to be played very, very soon in the near future here. Yeah. Um, Boxing Day, we've got um, three games. We've got Tampa Bay um, and Detroit. This is on Saturday, just for you American uh, fans. Uh, Saturday, we've got Tampa Bay, Detroit at 10. Uh, 49ers Cardinals at 1.30, and then uh, Dolphins Raiders at 5.15 on Saturday. And then Sunday, uh, the game that uh, most of us on the uh, West Coast here are looking forward to is the Seahawks Rams. Um, huge game for the battle for the NFC West. Um, a lot of good games to, yeah, keep our eye on and, uh, yeah, look, looking forward to this weekend. Oh, yeah, for sure. A lot of good games, a lot of great games. and. Uh, to solidify, you know, the playoff positions and all that sort of good stuff. And, uh, yeah, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to watch all these games. So Who's your sports. pick for MVP out of these three? Mahomes, Derrick Henry, Aaron Rodgers. Mahomes. Okay. D- Mahomes. Like, and I think a close second would be Derrick Henry, but I think it's Mahomes. I think it's Mahomes all day, every day. All right. Just, just all Mahomes. Yeah, I can't say his name enough. <laughs> are you going to? Uh, are you predicting that they're going to have a, a back-to-back Super Bowl victory? I, I, I think it's, I think it's well within the possibility that they have back-to-back Super Bowl victories. They, to me, they look like the best team in the NFL by far. Uh, they win. They can blow you out. They win the close games. And if Mahomes needs to take put the team on his back, well, he can do that too. So. Yeah, I, I would say that there's a very strong possibility that they repeat as Super Bowl champions. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they've got a hell of a team. It's going to be hard to, hard to beat them. So, um, yeah, but it's, uh, we've got, yeah, obviously, a lot of weeks to go before that. Um, but, yeah, nice wrap-up of uh, this week in the NFL. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about basketball? NBA season starts tomorrow. Uh, we've got two games to kick off on, on Tuesday. We've got the Golden State-Brooklyn matchup at 4 o'clock our time. Uh, it's kind of cool to see KD uh, facing his former team right away, and we'll see the uh, Steve Nash-led Brooklyn Nets facing against the Warriors. Um, I think this should be one of the highest-scoring games of the whole entire season, and it kicks it off. Uh, what, a, what a great way, what a great matchup that they put together to um, open it up. Oh, yeah, man. This is going to be fantastic. It's a great way for the NBA season to start up again. Get to see KD and Kyrie after those injuries that they've suffered. See how well they, 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 how good they are now going forward, which I think, I believe that they're fine from their preseason. And also, too, for Golden State, we get to see the new rookie, uh, Wiseman, and see uh, what he can do for that, uh, for that offense and their defense as well. I, I'm, it's going to be great. And then also, too, we get to see Steph Curry coming back and just hitting 30-footers, you know? It's, yeah. going, to be, it's going to be a fantastic game, man. Yeah. Fantastic. That's the early game, and then the late game tomorrow night has the Clippers and Lakers Battle of L.A. Uh, they talked about it so much last year as the, those top two teams, they were going to face each other, they thought, in the, in the finals. It didn't quite work out for the Clips, but um, yeah, it should be a great uh, matchup there, and a lot of fun to see the, the four top guys uh, battling each other and see if those Lakers, um, yeah, can, you know, rule supreme again. Yeah, yeah, because, like, the Clippers are looking up now because, you know, before we all thought that the Clippers were the better team. Clearly they were not. And now the Lakers have actually gotten better from the year before. Yeah. So it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Kawhi and Paul George deal with all these new pieces that the Lakers now have on their team. Yeah. 13 games Wednesday, so completely full slate on Wednesday. 
And then we've got Christmas Day, uh, which is always amazing and a lot of fun for the NBA. And I, I plan to have one eye on um, a lot of these games. We've got the Warriors and Bucks at 11:30, an amazing battle. The Nets and Celtics at two, the Mavs and Lakers at five, and the Clippers Nuggets at 7:30. Uh, the NBA does, does such a great job with putting these matchups together and getting you excited about basketball right off the hop. Uh, this year, obviously, it's different because it's right at the very first part of the season. But, um, man, can you believe those matchups on Christmas Day? No, I cannot. And I'm just – I'm super excited. I'm super excited to have uh, NBA basketball back on again and as quickly as it did happen because, hey, it's only been a couple months. And then all of a sudden, boom, we got basketball back. And I couldn't be happy. I really couldn't. I couldn't be happy. Uh, probably the two biggest stories in this offseason were Giannis and James Harden. Giannis Antetokounmpo and James Harden both uh, not sure if they're going to stay with their teams, switch teams. There's a lot of speculation. Giannis uh, finally signed his Supermax deal, staying with the Bucks for another five years. Uh, seems like a lot of people were happy with that move. Not the Raptors, not uh, some of the other speculated teams that were trying to get him, but um, it's kind of good for basketball to see a guy raised in a small market, played really well. They surrounded him with a lot of good players, and then he ends up staying there and signing for another five years. Um, what did you think about the deal? I thought the deal was great. You know, you want to know why? He's making over $51 million a year. Yeah, I, I think I'd be good with staying too. You know, it's just like, yeah, you know what? You guys, you guys are feeding me well. Sure, I'll, I'll stick around. I'll stay. But I also, too, I, I, I find it just incredibly appealing that he's decided to stay in a small market and finish what he started. You know, like, he grew, he grew with this market, he became better with this market, and now he's going to stay there until they win. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. Yeah. No, it's, I think it's good for basketball. I think um, these guys always – jumping teams to the big markets, you know, LA and New York and Miami and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's been a little bit tough for, um, you know, parody in the league and, and um, you know, they, yeah, I mean, they, that was a really big statement. They tried to surround him with good team or, you know, a good team around him and, and that should help the East stay competitive with the top of the West. Um, having, having a guy like that, the, the other teams are going to have to surround themselves with really good talent too. Miami obviously going to the finals, but um, yeah, we've got the Bucks up there. We got the Celtics, we got the Heat, we got the Raptors, um, a lot of good teams in that East. Uh, the Raptors had to shift gears because they were uh, alleviating Sally caps and they were trying to position themselves to be able to sign Giannis. They were going to, you know, offer him as much as they could and try to make an attractive package. Now I hear that they've made a really good offer for Harden. They've put Siakam on the table. They put a bunch of their young stars on the table, and they're trying to get Harden. Masai Ujiri um, realized, uh, you know, his his biggest uh, need is gone. Now Harden, uh, what do you think? Uh, do you think it's a smart move for the Raptors to do this? I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know because Harden plays a certain way. It's. I don't. It's not team oriented. That's what I'm going to say. It's not really team-oriented. And the Raptors are a team. They're, 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 that's their culture. They play as a team. Yep. And it's, it'd be very – it'd be very – it just, it just would, doesn't seem like it would be a fit with Harden with the Raptors. It just doesn't seem like that's a very good fit at all. I understand trying to get one of the best guys in the league to come play for your team. I get that. But I just don't know if that would work. Yeah. I think the Raptors would be better off not pursuing it, okay. in all honesty. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like um, because they had so much success going after Kawhi Leonard uh, and they you know, had him only for a year, I think Ujiri's trying to be all in the game and uh, you know, try to you know, put as much as he can into the top free agent type of guy out there, even though Harden's on a free agent, but uh, the top guy that might be available because he said he doesn't want to – play in Houston anymore. Um, but yeah, it's hard to find guys that can coexist with Harden and uh, make it work. It didn't work with Westbrook, hasn't worked with some of the others um, that they've surrounded themselves with. Uh, the other team that stepped up uh, over the last couple of days was Boston. 
Uh, they said they put Jalen Brown in a package together for him. Uh, it looks like um, uh, Phillies maybe moved off of him because uh, they're, they're saying Simmons or nothing and they don't want to get rid of Simmons. So, um, but uh, yeah, I guess we're going into the season with Harden playing in Houston. And um, yeah, we'll see if somebody can put together a really attractive package that Houston wants to put together and, and trade him. But um, yeah, he's still a rocket and we'll see um, what happens over the coming weeks. Yeah, he's still a disgruntled rocket. Hopefully he'll, you know, like I, 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 from the preseason games, it didn't look to me like he was really in game shape yet. So I guess he still has to play into that on top of the fact that he's disgruntled. So I, I think Houston is looking at it saying, we're not just going to give this guy away for nothing. We must get something back in return, and it's got to be something significant. Or else, you know what? Even if he's disgruntled, if I'm the Houston Rockets, you stay here. Yeah. Disgruntled or not, we don't care. We're paying you a ton of money anyway, so whatever. Yeah. Uh, just, a, just a couple of quick notes. Um, Rudy Gobert signed his five-year max contract, and um, he's kind of been the guy that's been that COVID guy because uh, he was, uh, you know, the reason why they, um, they, there was a positive test and they shut it down. Um, so, yeah, good to see him. They, they talked about there might be too much of a rift between him and Donovan Mitchell over him passing uh, the COVID to Mitchell and being so uh, aloof about the situation early on. But uh, nice to see, you know, him making that, uh, that, that deal and uh, put it together. And now he's there for five more years. Yeah, and also, too, like, I think Donovan Mitchell was the bigger man, obviously, in this situation where he put it behind him and said the man made a mistake, and he did make amends. Rudy Gobert has definitely made amends for the mistake that he did. And uh, you know what? They're able to move forward as an organization, as teammates. And uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's great for the Utah Jazz to keep retain his services for yeah. the future. Uh, this is some of his career highlights. He's... He's one of only 10 players to win multiple Defensive Player of the Year awards. He's actually got the second best field goal percentage in NBA history at 64%. Uh, second most blocks in the league since entering in 2013, over 1,000 blocks. And he's uh, been able to keep the opponent's field goal percentage at only 50% near the rim since he's been in the league. Um, like. Yeah, and he's a really, really tough good defender. Uh, I think it was a massive move for them and, and really good to see them uh, stick with him and, and keep it going. Uh, Kyle Kuzma signed a three-year, $40 million deal with the Lakers. Nice move for the Lakers. And as he said, in the offseason, they've just got better and better and better. And, uh, yeah, they should be the team to beat this year in the uh, in the NBA. And, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a great season. I'm, I'm – I'm disappointed that they didn't decide to go to a bubble. Uh, I think these leagues have to go to a bubble situation, uh, maybe play for a month, let the players off for a week or two, bring them back. Uh, I think it's going to cause havoc through this whole season. We're going to see a lot of COVID problems. Uh, Adam Silver was on the ESPN today, and he said, we're not jumping the queue in the vaccines, so they don't expect to have any other players uh, have vaccines for months and months and months and months, probably this whole entire season. So, um, yeah, hopefully it doesn't wreak havoc too bad on, on this season and we get to have a full, real, legit uh, year. Yeah, hopefully. But also, too, uh, a lot of props to Adam Silver saying that right away, saying, no, 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 we, we're, we're way to our turn, as they should, just as the NFL should as well, and they have. Yeah. Because, just because you have a lot of money, that's just, necessarily mean that you should be privileged enough to be be taking these vaccines that are needed for our frontline workers we need them first and foremost or our people that are of advanced age those people get it first and then you know what the best of the best the most fittest the, you know like the healthiest people on the planet they can wait yeah they can wait I uh, heard a, you, you mentioned frontline workers, and I heard a really, really awesome idea. And I hope uh, this starts getting some legs and enough support behind it. Uh, this was floated by JT the Brick, who's um, a satellite um, uh, personality, I have to say, a satellite radio personality who uh, has 
usually is very, very good at predicting outcomes of, of games and stuff. But um, his proposal is this. Super Bowl this year, uh, it's going to be really hard to uh, socially distance, have enough fans there, having it, you know, the, as full as it normally is. He thinks that they should invite every frontline worker that gets the vaccine and is immunized from this disease and give them a ticket to uh, go to the Super Bowl and fill it up. Uh, show your show the appreciation for all their hard work through this whole pandemic and allow them the ability to be there filling up uh, the, the stadium. Uh, kind of a cool idea. Man. I hope it gets legs. It would be really fun to, to see them embrace the frontline workers this way and, and fill it up. Yeah, that would be nice, but you know, money, right? Like, <laughs> that fills in this to make money. And I don't know if they'd be willing to. Because you know how expensive those tickets are, right? Yeah. Uh, and it, I think it's I think it would be a great move. I think it'd be a great marketing move on the NFL. I just don't know if their money people would be like, mm, you know, no. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? True. But it would, it, would, it would be a great move. I, yeah. I would definitely support that because those are the people that where we've needed them the most, they've been right there for us. So yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, there's been over 300,000 deaths in the U.S. now from the coronavirus and uh, it's wreaked havoc around the world. And, you know, these people have, um, you know, went to battle. It's, you know, it's a it's a fight. It's a battle. It's a, you know, it's a war. And, uh, you know, they've been on the, the front lines uh, for the past nine months. And, you know, it's been uh, insane. Um, you know, uh, I, yeah, uh, you know, maybe maybe reduction of price of tickets and, you know, not, you know, obviously um, paying full price or maybe giving them away. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, it'd be nice to see uh, that Super Bowl full, filled up and uh, those people recognized for everything they've done. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. It, it would be really nice if, if like, even, like, let's just say a portion of the stadium was just dedicated to them or something yeah. like that. Something yeah. to that effect would be yeah. cool. Good point, yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the last UFC card of the year here uh i do want to mention our partners and sponsors first though anchor fm has really been a fantastic partner and sponsor of complete sports media uh, they call themselves the easiest place to make a podcast you go to anchor fm and you follow the links there and uh, you can set up a podcast uh, do what jason and i are doing today and uh yeah have a lot of fun talking about whatever subject that you're into and uh, yeah it'd be uh, a great place to start. Um, Verbero has been a fantastic partner for us. They're a hockey equipment and apparel company, the industry leader in technology, performance, and value. And the V350 stick is a can't miss stick. If you play hockey, play with this stick, you'll be happy that uh, you made the purchase. Um, you can find them on completesportsmedia.com. Uh, Pampas and Possibilities, they design and sell dried florals, floral arrangements, and do installations. Designers of handmade, curated things with West Coast vibes at really reasonable prices. Uh, check them out on Instagram, Facebook, and our Complete Sports Media uh, website. And Forever Living, the aloe vera company. They grow and manufacture aloe vera-based products for health and beauty. So, as I said, CompleteSportsMedia.com. There's links there that you can uh, purchase the products at reduction in prices. So uh yes okay so the very last card of the ufc a crazy year in the ufc we've had 24 events in a row without a break uh every saturday for 24 weeks uh, after the pandemic hit there was actually 456 fights in the ufc this year and it culminated with the, the final fight um between wonder boy and and uh, oh, and Jeff Neal, Wonder Boy, and Jeff Neal, and um, yeah, it was a great year, fantastic year, and an amazing performance by Wonder Boy uh, to culminate this um, crazy year, and uh, a great year for the UFC. Actually, a lot of really, really good cards. Yes, a ton of great cards, and also too, just the significance of them putting on 24 straight events from July 11th is. Absolutely amazing, unprecedented. I don't know if they'll ever be able to do this feat again, 
mm. but it was well uh it was it was well received by all of us fans so thank you ufc for doing all of that for us fans because that's mm. what they did yeah. and for thompson and neil my goodness thompson masterclass. Mm. i've never seen him look any better his movement was ridiculous to the point that jeff neil kept trying to find him and he couldn't find him literally throughout the entirety of that fight he couldn't find him man and he was absolutely amazing yeah. absolutely amazing i it, his movement was unprecedented uh jeff neil tried to cut off the cage but it just it just didn't matter it just did not matter yeah. he just kept dancing around him the entirety of that fight yeah that was uh you know just such an incredible performance and and to me you know that's the true nature of one of the best fighters in the world is being unable to be hit. Uh, we saw Floyd Mayweather become one of the greatest boxers of all time because nobody could hit him. And if you can't be hit, you can't be beat. So uh, Thompson's movement was just so absolutely incredible. And, and martial arts was always that way. When I started martial arts, that was one of the main reasons where you just knew how to get out of the way of the punch, of the kick. You just slid a little bit to one side, a little bit to the other, and then you utilized the, that guy's momentum against him and put him down on the ground or was able to give him a few strikes. Well, Thompson, if you ever want to see martial arts at the highest level, utilize, just watch this fight. It was just an absolute masterclass, incredible performance, and you know I can't say enough good things about Wonderboy. He had been coming off his longest layoff ever. He broke both of his hands at UFC 246, and he had um, not fought for a long time. Uh, he just looked absolutely amazing. Uh, there was reports today, though, that I saw that really surprised me, and I didn't realize how compromised Jeff Neal was going into this fight. He had suffered congest. Uh, congestive heart failure the week of the fight he had sepsis and he said in the first round he got a poke in the eye and he said he was blind for the last four rounds out of the one eye uh, so for him to go five rounds dealing with the health problems and concerns that he had uh, is an absolute uh, testament to his warrior spirit and uh, I don't know how the uh, UFC allowed him to fight with heart failure the week of the fight. Uh, I don't know how he was even in there, but um, another example, and you, have, you and I say this pretty much every week, these guys are the toughest people on the planet. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that he, he almost died. I, I didn't know that, man. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I, wow, man. Like I don't actually know how he was able to fight that. I don't know how they felt that. Wow. Um, and like you said, these guys are the toughest people on the planet. Normal people can't do that. Normal people can't do what he did. Period. It's no, just, not at that's all. That's super human. Super yeah. Human. Wonder Boy um, called out Jorge Masvidal, and I think Masvidal has accepted the fight. Uh, I think, um, honestly, Wonder Boy should have been the champion at, at one point. He fought Tyron Woodley, and they fought to a draw. And, uh, you know, I think he definitely could have won that fight. Um, yeah, I, I expect, you know, he's going to have some really, really tough opponents in the next little while. But, uh, you know, to win all five rounds, uh, to just put on that incredible performance. Uh, I hope they put him against Masvidal. Uh, I think that'll be a really, really fun fight. And, um, yeah, it was a really neat main event. Uh, I wasn't sure going in if it would live up to – you know, the billing, but um, yeah, great way to, to finish the year and um, yeah, move forward, uh, you know, going into 2021, which, you know, I, I see a lot of really good fights uh, coming up, but um, yeah, it, it turned out actually phenomenally well for the UFC this year. They had a, a ton of really, really great fights and, and a lot of the divisions got some really new contenders near the top. Yes, yes, it, it was absolutely a banner year for the UFC with some of these new guys that came out of nowhere mm. to just really storm the UFC, like Chimaev, Kevin Holland. You got these guys that have just come into the UFC and have taken it over, taking it by storm. 
and it's been fantastic to see. It really has been. It's been yeah. a great year for the UFC. Yeah, it's uh, it's one honestly set uh, one of the standards for sports. Uh, being able to pull this off, uh, the Dana White Contender Series was phenomenal. I watched it week after week. Thirty-seven fighters were signed out of the last season of Dana White Contender Series. A lot of these guys made their UFC debuts and uh, just looked absolutely great coming right out of the gate. And uh, yeah, even guys that are you know competing for the top of the divisions now coming out of that and. And, uh, yeah, to have 24 events from July 11th onward to now, um, yeah, everyone deserves a little break, three-week break, until we, we uh, fight into the new year. Uh, the new year, um, obviously, everybody's looking forward to that uh, Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor fight, uh, the biggest one that we're looking forward to next. But, um, but, yeah, oh, man, I cannot say enough good things about this UFC, and I'm so glad that, you and I have had 24 weeks of fun to watch them and to be able to break them down every week like this. Oh yeah, it, it's been it's been our pleasure to do that, to to watch all these awesome awesome fights week after week, and uh, I can't wait for more of the same in the new year. Yeah, in the uh, in the co-main on Saturday, Jose Aldo um, had another really big victory. Uh, he was, uh, you know, an amazing champion about 10 years. He was uh, right at the top there. Uh, Conor McGregor knocking him out in 13 seconds kind of, uh, you know, put a little bit of a damper on him in a lot of people's eyes. And he, uh, you know, had to fight his way back up to the top. But a uh, really great performance by him. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, the future is pretty bright for him. He's looking great. Oh, yeah, man. Um, Aldo looked fantastic in this fight because this was this was a close fight this was a very close fight up until the third round where Aldo switched it up took him down and then once he took him down got his back and controlled him for the entirety of the third round which allowed him to get the win and but that's not usually the way that Aldo wins no. but you know what he's a champion and he understands that he needs to adapt sometimes to a certain situation to win these fights. And he adapted to this one and he got the win. And it was just, it's, it's vintage Aldo. The guy's a champion, the guy's a winner. Regardless of the 13 second knockout, the guy can still get it done. And he showed that on Saturday night. One great thing I loved about the Saturday night was they showed some old WEC highlights because they had both Aldo, who was the featherweight champion, and Pettis, who was the last champion, uh, where he uh, knocked out Benson Henderson with the Matrix cage uh, jump kick. And uh, it was really cool. Uh, WC was one of my favorite organizations and really nice to see them be able to show some of that footage from the, the last two champions in, in, that, um, in that promotion. Oh, yeah. No, that was, that was just going down uh, memory road right there. And just to see them be so dominant when they were younger. And then uh, seeing Pettis come off the cage like a ninja with that kick was just uh, one of the best highlights ever in sports. Really. Yeah. Uh, Aldo called out Dillashaw. A lot of people are calling out Dillashaw right now. Uh, uh, wh what do you think about uh, Aldo and Dillashaw? Oh, I think that'd be a great fight. I think I'm, I'd definitely be pulling for Aldo because I just don't like Dillashaw. Sorry, not a fan. Anyways, he's a cheater. But I definitely pulling for Aldo in that fight. And I think they, they'll make a great fight. Great fight. Yeah. Um, okay. What about the uh, welterweight fight between uh, Michelle Pereira and Chaos, Kalen Williams? Uh, yeah. You and I uh, have sort of the same opinions of Pereira, but uh, he got the decision win. Um, what did you, what did you think about the, the dancing uh, fool here? Yeah, it's, it's great. So anyway, so he won. Um, but he, you know what? I think with his uh, the new coach in, in uh, with his new coaching corner that he has, they tried to keep that down to a minimum. Yeah. Basically, it's like you can do some of that, but we're actually just going to need you to, you know, like fight proper, you know, like so you can win these fights as opposed to look flashy and cool and not win anything. Because you got into this to win. Yeah. You have to remember that, son. You got into this to win, and he managed to keep that to a minimum. But when he needed to win the fight in those, those close grappling exchanges, he actually did it, especially in the third round. 
where he, he finished on top with ground and pound in a dominant position against uh, Chaos Williams. And that's really what got him the win. So he was able to keep that within himself, the flashiness, and actually just fight the guy. He fought his, he fought his fight and fought it well, was able to beat a very, very dangerous fighter in Williams. Yeah. Yeah, he was able to get the late takedowns and, and finish on top, uh, dominate. And, um, yeah, he's, he's got a lot of finishes uh, when he fights. Uh, yeah, he's talented. He's a big guy for that weight class. And, and uh, yeah, he was able to get the win. He called out Anthony Pettis, speaking of Pettis, after the fight. Um, probably be pretty uh, pretty good matchup. Yeah, it w that would be. That would be. Uh, I I don't know if Pettis would take that fight because now that he's fighting at 155 now, I don't know if that would be of interest to him whatsoever. And considering just how big Pereira is, he looks like he's a whole weight division up above that of where he fights. So I don't know if that will ever be a thing. But you know what? Good for Pereira. And hopefully he can keep the nonsense down to a minimum and actually just fight people. Yeah. Maybe. We'll yeah. see. Um, okay, this was a, uh, a battle, uh, this next bantamweight fight was a battle between Rob Font and Marlon Marais in the bantamweight division. Uh, it didn't last really long, through a little less than four minutes, and uh, Rob Font ended up getting the KO. He, he rocked Marais a few times, put him on crazy legs, and was able to, um, yeah, get the victory. Uh, big, 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 very big win for Font. Oh, huge win for Font because Marais actually surprised Font, surprised me as well, with going with more of a wrestling-centric attack against Rob Font. Basically, kind of admitting, I think your stand-up is better than mine. Well, it clearly was. <laughs> it clearly was because once he was able to go off from getting taken down, I believe, twice in that fight, he got back up on his feet, and he literally took it to him immediately. Mm -hmm. And then that was the end of Marlon Marais. Yeah, man. Yeah, Font's strikes were just so tough. Uh, you know, jab put him uh, on, you know, skates and then an uppercut. And then he just came in and just started swarming him. And really, really good performance by Font. Uh, yeah, taking out the number three uh, ranked fighter in that division. Uh, really, really big win. And yeah, it was impressive. I, I liked it a lot. Oh, the, yeah, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. It was fun, and it was it was a dominant win against the number three guy. He yeah. took him out. He took him out in four minutes. That's that's going to leapfrog him. And his next fight, I I'd have to say it's got to be a number one or number two guy. And then after that, he's going to be fighting for the belt. That's yeah. it. Well, yeah, that's a stacked division, yeah. obviously, yeah. and uh, yeah, a lot of great fighters. So, yeah, twenty twenty one, I think is going to be bright for Rob Font. So, a uh, big big huge win to finish the year. Uh, the heavyweight fight uh, that opened up the card was uh, Marcin Tabura and Greg Hardy. Uh, first time Hardy's ever been uh, knocked out, TKO. Uh, was super unimpressed with his cardio. Um, you know, he's a football player, and football players play in that seven-second burst, ten-second burst of action. But, um, you know, somebody mentioned to me over the weekend, I think it was Scott Holborn actually, said uh, he's been in mixed martial arts for – Marta artists for four years. Uh, how could he not have figured out his cardio? Uh, but man, he gassed really badly, really fast. And Tuboro was able to take him down and, and finish him off. Uh, not a good performance for Hardy there. It wasn't, but, but I will say this about Hardy. His stand-up looked a heck of a lot better from his previous fights. True. Stand-up looked actually really, really good. Now, the thing that uh, the announcers were saying then, which I was kind of questioning myself, was, well, where's his wrestling and his grappling at? Yeah. How's his jujitsu? And once Tabora, being the savvy veteran that he is, took him to the ground, well, Hardy was screwed. Couldn't get up, didn't know what to do, and he was in a world of trouble. And on top of all of that, he was gassed. Yeah. And then that's what, and that's what lost him the fight. That's literally what it is. So he needs to continue to keep getting his craft better in the wrestling department, in a jiu-jitsu, and also, too, his endurance needs to be cleaned up big time. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like with Hardy, they, they really um, they like him on the roster. 
They really want to uh, be able to showcase him a lot. They've been giving him a lot of opponents that he's supposed to be, he should be. Um, but Tabura, uh, you know, I don't think uh, is on the same level of striking, but why would you strike with a guy that big and that powerful? Uh, take him down. So uh, if the UFC wants to keep him on the rise and keep him up there on main cards, uh, they got to put him against strikers. If they put him against a, a guy that's um, good on the ground, good with takedowns, uh, he's in trouble unless he severely trains and gets that part of his game a lot better because it's not very good right now. No, and you know what? If you're in this game, this mixed martial arts game, well, then you got to be good at everything. So, And that's clearly a deficit in his game, so he has to get that better. He has to get that better if he wants to play with the, the guys at the top of his uh, division. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, Tuboros, uh, you know, not an elite uh, heavyweight fighter. He's kind of a second tier, but uh, that was his fourth straight win. Uh, he's tied with the longest win streak at heavyweight with Curtis Blades, Ciro Gane, and Francis Ngannou. Um, there's lots of talk that Tabora, uh might be fighting Walt Harris next. Uh, we'll see if that comes together. Um, I didn't realize that Hardy has a severe asthma. So uh, maybe this is a, a big problem uh, with his cardio and with his uh, stamina. Uh, also, uh, over the past couple of months, he's been talking about switching to boxing and facing uh, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. He's actually been saying that he wants to fight. Um, I think it's just, uh, you know, ridiculous and, uh, you know, sort of come on. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he uh, realizes he can never be good on the ground and he just has to, you know, go into something that's only striking, like boxing. Well, if he's trying to take the Conor approach, hey, buddy, you're not Conor McGregor. It's not going to work, eh? It's just, nah, no, nah, you, you, don't, you don't get to cut past or cut the line to try to fight the best of the best immediately. That's not going to happen. That's not... It's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. It's wishful thinking. It's cool that he's doing this to try to promote himself, but it's, that's never going to happen. No. Ever. <laughs> yeah. And especially talking about uh, two of the best heavyweights in the world, you know, just, oh, man. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All these call-outs, you know, a lot of times they do happen for guys, but, uh, you know, sometimes it gets to be a little ridiculous. And, you know, I, I think, come on, uh, you know, when a guy – it bites off uh, 10 times more than he can chew. It's like, you know, just swipe that and uh, we'll talk about something else. Um, they, the lead of the prelims, the lead fight of the prelims was the welterweight fight between Pettis, who we mentioned earlier against Alex Morono. And uh, Pettis was, uh, you know, definitely the better fighter, uh, was able to uh, take the decision win and uh, looked pretty, pretty impressive um, in that performance. Oh, he, he looked great because Morono was really trying to put him on the back foot with a ton of pressure. But Pettis was able to fight off his, like, fight while moving backwards. Mm -hmm. And he's very good at that. He's actually really, really good at that. And then eventually, he caught Morono with, like, a, a spinning, spinning heel kick that almost knocked him out. Yeah. And awesome. you forget just how good Pettis can be. Yeah. Sometimes I think you can forget that. And he had a – that was a great – Dominant victory, a great come, like a great victory for Pettis. Great victory. Yeah, he um, he actually uh, has switched to Robert Drysdale uh, for his jujitsu coach recently. Is looking really good. That uh, that wheel kick was phenomenal, though. Yeah, he still got those types of amazing moves in his repertoire. Uh, he said he's going back to 155, unfinished business. He wants to be the champion of the UFC again. And, uh, yeah, well, performances like that, I can see him doing really, really well. And, and uh, yeah, we'll see um, we'll see what shakes out for Pettis. Uh, he's had some, you know, up and down performance for the last little while, but um, that was a big win and, and nice to see him moving forward with a victory into 2021. Uh, yeah, well, let's talk a little bit about some of the other fights. Um, a lot of decisions. Um, anything that you want to um, – Make mention of, of some of the other fights. We've got the bantamweight women's fight, the women's flyweight fight. we got the catchweight fight. Um, what, what do you want to mention there? Um, I, I just wanted to mention that uh, Santos' win over Robinson, great win by Santos. 
Um, Robertson almost caught Santos with an arm bar right at the beginning of that uh, fight, but she managed to get out of it. And on top of that, out-wrestled Robertson. Santos is a very good fighter, complete fighter, and she only has one loss in that division so far. Wow. So she's on the up and up. She's, she's, she's on the rise. So wow. I'd say keep your eyes out for that particular young lady. And uh, the win a royal fight, well, I just want to mention this one because it was funny. Because you, you had the giant, and like, you know, you, you had the giant and you had the midget. You, like, you, you had these two guys come at each other. And I'm just looking at it going, I don't know if I'll ever see anything like this ever again. There's, yeah. there's an eight inch difference in height. And Arroyo, for whatever reason, he didn't win. And I'm, I'm sorry, man. If you have a reach advantage of that magnitude against a guy like that, you gotta, you should be able to win that fight. You should be yeah. able to win that fight, but he couldn't win. And win, I give him all the credit in the world, 12 takedowns in that in the entirety of that fight 12 takedowns to get the win awesome stuff yeah that was impressive uh yeah such a small guy facing such a tall guy one of the tallest guys you know we can see and uh, when yeah you know massive reach disadvantage for him but uh realized that he had to get in close and just take him down and even though he wasn't doing a ton on the ground he kept getting him there and you know getting into a dominant position over and over and over, and and uh, Hoyo has to go back and you know get some, uh, yeah, take down defense skills because, uh, yeah, that was the the big difference there. But yeah, it was like six three against what five seven five, or six. something. Five, five six. six. Oh man, five, yeah. just uh, yeah, massive difference there when they stepped into the cage. It was, it was yeah, pretty funny to watch and and uh, yeah, just wow, what a what a difference. Um, Unfortunately, our Canadian that was supposed to fight on the card, um, Eamon Zahabi, tested positive for COVID, had to pull out of his fight with Draco Rodriguez. Uh, they had That's uh, Faraz Zahabi's uh, little brother, the guy that's been the trainer of George St. Pierre and many, many guys to come out of the TriStar gym. Uh, too bad to see because Jillian Robertson, um, yeah, was, was good, but it was been nice to see another Canadian on the card. Yeah, it, 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 would, it would have been nice. And it was unfortunate that uh, he contracted the COVID. But you know what? He'll get over that, and then we'll be seeing him, I'm sure, in the new year. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, man, can you believe we've been doing this 24 weeks in a row, talking about the UFC? And, uh, yeah, card after card after card. Uh, a lot of amazing, amazing fights. And that was a lot of fun for me. I, I sure enjoyed it. I was, I was glad to see the stretch. And, um, but yeah, we're going to take a, a week hiatus uh, because of Christmas and uh, no UFC. Um, second to last week of the NFL, uh, we're going to have a chance to visit our families. Uh, we're away from work, uh, away from uh, thinking about anything. We'll just be able to enjoy the food, enjoy the family, enjoy you know just hanging out and watching sports for just the fun of it. Yes, exactly. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better amount of time spent with my good friend here talking about sports and talking about the UFC. It's been an absolute pleasure and I cannot wait to do more of this, more of the same in the new year. So to you and yours, my friend, I'm wishing you a Merry Christmas, a happy holidays and all the best in the new year. Yeah, to you too, Jason. Thanks for your kind words. I appreciate it. Uh, you, you really brighten up um, all of my weekends. Uh, it's really nice to know that we're gonna get a chance to do this every week. Uh, it's been really fun. We, uh, yeah, we have laughs. We get into, you know, really good insight and in-depth conversations about so much of this. And I'm getting tons of feedback from a lot of people that they love it and love you as a, as a guest. And, and uh, I'm glad that we were able to make this work in 2020 with through all this chaos and craziness. And uh, yeah, hopefully at some point in 2021, we'll be able to be in the same studio and we'll have even more fun and more laughs and, and it'll be great. And uh, yeah, happy holidays. Uh, all the best to you and your family. I hope you guys have a really, really nice Christmas season. And, and I guess we'll talk in a couple of weeks. You betcha, buddy. You betcha. So enjoy your time off and uh, enjoy all the food that you're going to get. Because I know <laughs> I am. I yeah. definitely am. Bring your Tupperware. That's what you always tell me. Bring your Tupperware. <laughs> all right, my friend. Okay. Signing off. Take care. Bye for now. Take care. Bye.
Okay, everybody. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for another fantastic time um, watching, listening, viewing. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we had fun as always, as we keep saying. Um, yeah, it's so fun to be able to follow the UFC and then break them down, follow the NFL, basketball, all the uh, great sports that we have here in North America. And I uh, hope you enjoyed 2020 as much as I did for this aspect. Obviously, it's been terrible and tough for many aspects of the pandemic. And um, yeah, all the families uh, that this has affected uh, we're, we're seeing maybe a light at the end of the tunnel finally. And um, yeah, in a couple of weeks, we'll resume this. And uh, we look forward to bringing you a lot more fun content on the Complete Sports Media podcast. Uh, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. I hope uh, you're able to have a, a good Christmas this year, even though it uh, might be a little less than usual. I uh, hope you get some spirit uh, and um, we can, yeah, look forward to uh, the new year. So love you lots. Take care of yourself. Bye for now.